All right, today's lesson is continuation on um, using the ambient generic to create sound effects in the game. And what we're going to do today is work on making um, switched and triggered lights, or I'm sorry, switched and triggered sounds that play when the player passes through a trigger or presses a button. And um, so we're going to do three different variations. So first, let's take a look at everything, and then we'll go back and show you how I did it. So let me go ahead and compile my map. All right, so here we are. This is the map that we've been, uh, or I've been using for sound. So. Um, We'll take a look at a few of the options that we have here. So first off, um, we're going to do a triggered sound. So in this area right here, there's a trigger. And I'm going to turn my volume up. You should hear a zombie when I pass through the trigger. All right? So that's a triggered sound. Now you'll notice it only plays once. So it's a trigger once. We'll look at the trigger. Um, but this would be good for jump scares or any time when you want the player to hear something a single time. You want to be cautious with that because you don't want them to be able to walk back and forth over the same spot and get the sound to play over and over. Um, it it kind of breaks the immersion in the game. All right, let's go in here. So over here, I've got the radio. And now what I do is if I press the radio... All right, so the radio can be turned on and off. And then the last one is over here. So I've got a light up on the ceiling and I've got a kind of a crappy placeholder switch right here. So when I press the switch, you can hear the fluorescent light. If I come over here, Sound is gone. All right, so it is important to note how um, like interesting that sound is of just adding the fluorescent light sound. It doesn't change gameplay at all, but it makes a really neat sort of environmental impact with this light up here, when I walk by here, just that little buzz of the light is really, you know, it kind of just adds a little depth to the game. It's kind of, you know, just makes it more interesting. And I don't like the appearance of that light. I probably picked the wrong uh, flicker pattern because it is, I think it's going too dark on me. Yeah. All right. Now it's out. All right, and ju just notice how much more interesting walking through here is. When I take the sound out, it's like, it's just not as interesting. But when I do this, just the, the little Doppler effect of passing and the buzz of the light just adds a nice little element to the map. So let's take a look at how we did all this. All right, we'll start with the screaming zombie. All right, so what I, I've got here is a trigger box, okay? This is a trigger once. So to create this, what I did is I just made a box, covered it with trigger texture, and then I turned it into an entity. So um, I used the tie to entity. You guys should all know how to do that by now. So I've got my trigger, make a box, I apply trigger texture to it. Oops. Let's make the box again. Hit enter. All right. I make a box. I right click on the box. Tie to entity. You could also press Control T, but for my lessons, I'll always show you the the uh, manually manual way of doing it. So I'm going to tie to entity, and for this one. I made it a trigger once, okay? 
Um, because I only want the zombie to scream one time. I don't want the player to continuously walk back and forth through this thing and have the zombie howl exactly the same every single time. It would just really break the immersion and also take the jump scare away out of it. If you, if you could make it play over and over again, rather than unexpectedly, it, it takes the whole, you know, scariness out of it. All right, so once I make it a trigger once, I click apply, and then let's take a look at the settings that I've got on the one over here. All right, so under my flags, nothing. Under my output, it's pretty simple. On start touch, this is the name of the, the ambient generic, play sound, and I also check fire only once. It's um, This is a trigger once, so you probably don't have to do that. It's habit. Um, you know, I, I check it when I want something to fire once. So even though this is a trigger once, just out of habit, I always check that. All right, let's take a look at the sound that goes with this guy, okay? Now remember, the sound is positional. So by default, wherever this little speaker's at is where the sound is gonna come from. So for this zombie scare, I wanted it to come from over here, so I put it up on the roof. If I wanted it to come from behind the player, I could put the speaker behind me. It's, uh, it's positional audio, so you put it where you want it to come from. So on the sound effect, this is an ambient generic. It's what we did yesterday. Um, here's your volume. You can adjust it if you want. Under sound name, I just w clicked browse, and I searched for zombie sounds, found one I liked. Uh, importantly on this, though, under flags, I said start silent and is not looped. So I don't want the zombie to continuously keep howling once the player triggers this. Um, I also don't want the zombie to howl at the start of the game. So I check the start silent option here, okay? So when the game starts, this sound effect is silent and it is not looped. And to trigger it, the player just walks through this box right here. This is a trigger once, it fires off that sound, right? Simple, simple. Now the radio slightly more complex um, so I set up a sound same configuration ambient generic um, we'll talk about custom sounds here in a second this is a Slim Whitman song from House of a Thousand Corpses I always thought it was an interesting choice for uh, Rob Zombie to choose for that movie so um, so this is a, a old Slim Whitman song um, you'll notice I put the sound effect right in front of the radio because that's where I want the sound to come from um, under flags start silent for this one uh, I wanted it to try to loop I don't know if the song is looped or not I haven't sat and listened to it all the way through um, but I unchecked this so if it will loop you know it'll at least try to loop it but most importantly I have it start silent I also gave it a name okay. now for the radio what I've done here is I I did a funk button just like we did for light switches um, if you don't remember how to do that, look back on your switched light lesson. Um, I want to say it's 20, but I, I don't remember. You'll have to look at the YouTube channel. Um, so if you look at this little button here, let me move it out of the way. There's my radio prop. So I put this no draw box over the top of it. So I made a box. I covered it with no draw. I right clicked on it, tie to entity, and the entity is a function button. Okay. Now, with the funk button, there's a few things you need to remember. On your flags, by default, button entities in Half-Life move. So when you touch this, it actually will move away from the player, you know, several inches. And um, so I always check don't move, because otherwise your actual button box will move away from you. Toggle. So toggle means when I turn it on, it's going to stay on. And then use activates means that um, I have to press E the E button to use it. The output for this is pretty simple. On in, target entity named is the sound radio. That's this sound effect right here. Via this input, so when I press the button, who am I talking to? This entity. And then the third box is what do you want to do with it? So it's these menus are context sensitive. So what that means is when I pick an ambient generic right here, this sound radio is this entity right here. That means this menu will change to do um, or to say only things that this entity is capable of doing. So I'm going to go ahead and select play sound. Click up. 
supply. And then I wanted to be able to toggle the radio. I want to be able to turn it off and on. So I made a second output. So I clicked add. And for the second one, I have on out, which means, you know, the button has popped out. So I've, I've turned it off. Again, the entity named is going to be this guy right here, whatever you named it, sound radio. And then via this input, so what's going to happen when I, when I pop the button out? I'm going to stop the sound. Click apply. So now we have a toggle button that controls this sound right here. When I press it, it plays the sound. If I press it again, stop the sound. Simple. All right. Now the final one, this guy up here. You'll notice this light did something that you guys have not seen before. We switched its skin. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of different techniques here. And um, I want you to make me a really nice on and off light for today's lesson. That'll demonstrate that you know how to do all of this stuff. All right, so first off, I want you to find a light prop that has multiple skins. So what I mean by that is I searched for fluorescent. I typed in F-L-O-U and I found this Prop Lab Fluorescent Light 001A. Okay, it's this light right here. Now if we go to the skins tab right here, you'll notice that there's two skins on this light. So there's an on and an off state. So I went ahead and selected skin one, which is the off state. Okay, so there's on, there's off. So step one, I want you to find a prop that is a light that has two skins. Now, not all lights have multiple skins. So you're going to have to look through the lights and find a light prop that has two skins, an on and an off skin. And in the skin settings, I want you to set it to the off skin. Okay. So notice I've got two skins here. So I'm going to select skin one. This guy's off. Okay. Now the type of prop we're using is a prop dynamic, right? The reason we're doing a prop dynamic is because I need to be able to name this prop. Um, a prop static can't be named, all right? So I'm gonna set a prop dynamic. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna select prop dynamic. Drop it in the game, open it up world model, browse, and find yourself a light that has multiple skins. And I want you to choose the off skin, okay? Then I want you to name it, all right? So we're gonna name, let's get rid of this guy here. So here's my prop dynamic. So now the weird thing is the name is not at the top like you're used to. You're gonna the top here is parent. So make sure you pay attention to what you're clicking on. We don't want to parent this thing to anything. But if you go down a little bit where it says name, go ahead and name it. We have to be able to reference it. So it has to have a name. So I named this one prop underscore garage light. Right? So that's my light. Prop. Now, the next piece of this is a light. So this is just a generic light. I clicked on my entity tool. I came over here, I typed in light, which gives me just the generic light bulb, right? The, the regular um, light. So for the light, again, I have to have a name on it. Brightness, color, whatever, pick what you like. Under flags, it's going to be initially dark, okay? Because the light is off. Okay, so this is a prop dynamic with a name. This is a light also with a name, but notice the names aren't the same. Remember, unique name. On the light, my flag is initially dark. Okay, piece number three sound effect so this is the sound that I want this light to make so I'm actually gonna move this because I want to put it more centered with my light all right 
So this is our normal ambient generic. Under sound, sound name, I went browse and I typed in the beginning of fluorescent and I found, it looks like it says flower light, but it actually means fluorescent light. And if you were looking for a sound for a refrigerator, this is an excellent sound, I think, for that too, if you turn the volume down. Um, somebody asked me about this yesterday. They couldn't find a sound for their refrigerator. I think this is a great sound. I would use this as a refrigerator sound. All right, so I have an ambient generic. I named it sound for garage light. There's my sound name. The volume, set it to whatever you want. Under flags, start silent. Okay. Click apply. So now we've got this light set up right here. It's out. This is dark. This is off. Okay. I've got all these things set. Now make yourself a button. Okay. Funk button, just like we did before. Don't move use um, activates just a regular button all right so i have a funk button don't move toggle use activates so there's the button operates just like any other button so the, i'm not going to reteach the entire button here this is just a regular funk button nothing special about it i named it it's the switch for the garage light under flags i have don't move toggle use activates the trick on this one is all these outputs okay so we are controlling three different objects here so I have to remember when I create the inputs and outputs for this thing that I'm I'm activating all the different things that have to be done so I have a light that I need to turn on I have a skin that I need to change and I have a sound that I need to play. So let's go down the list of inputs and outputs. So on the button, on in, light garage, turn on. So when I press the button, the light is gonna turn on. The next one, on in, sound for the garage light, I'm gonna play sound. Okay, so I turned on the light, I played the sound. Now this third one, is where we're gonna flip the skin on the prop. So this is something you guys have never done before, but it's actually super easy to do and it's kind of cool because it makes your lights switch and we can actually change the skins on an object dynamically in the game. So my third input here, or output I guess, on in, this is the prop for the garage light via this input, skin. Now once I do that, a fourth box is going to open up because this knows that this prop has multiple skins and I have to tell it which skin that I want to use. Now, if you remember, I had two skins. I had skin zero, which was the on position of the light, and I had skin one, which was the off position of the light. So when I turn this light on, I play the sound. I'm going to take my light and I'm going to set the skin to zero, which is the on skin, the one where the light looks like it's on. Now for the next three outputs, these undo everything I just did. So these are the opposites. So on out, this means I press the button and you know the button goes off. I'm gonna take the light and I'm gonna turn the light off. I'm gonna take the sound and I'm going to stop the sound. And then finally, I'm gonna take the prop I'm gonna change its skin back to one, all right? So these top three, turn the light on, play the sound, flip the skin. The bottom three, turn the light off, stop the sound, flip the skin back to the other one. Your assignment today is to make a flipped skin switched light for me that has light, sound, and skin. All right, best of luck. Oh, before I leave, sorry, announcement threw me off. Custom sound. Um, if you look in your Half-Life folder, let me open it up here and I'll show you where it is. If you go into the folder where your Half-Life game is at, and I can't tell you the exact directory because um, mine might be slightly different than yours, 
But those of you interested in sounds, waves work the best, okay? WAV files. And you're gonna go into your like C drive, Steam, or it's like program files, x86, Steam. And then you're gonna find your Steam apps folder. Inside that, you're gonna go to Common, Half-Life 2, HL2, and you're gonna see a folder for sound. If you open that up, these are where all the sounds are at. I usually have a folder for myself that I uh, that I put my custom stuff in. So like under radio, um, this is some Metallica I put in here, and here's the Slim Whitman, Whitman song. It will do MP3s too, but I've had better luck with waves, all right? So any of you who are interested in custom sounds, this is the folder you're looking for inside your Steam apps, Common, Half-Life 2, HL2, Sound, and then you can create a folder in there if you want, or put the sounds in one of the existing folders, all right? Uh, custom sounds are not required for the lesson, though, but the switched light with a changing skin and a sound effect are required. Give me a video of it working, or you're gonna need six different, well, not six, you'll need some screenshots that show me all of this information, okay?